52458, cleared for takeoff. evolved with fire. Fire shaped these forests. Everywhere we look, when we you know, drive through the gorge, when we drive you know, up the Clackamas like we are now, these, these forests have all burned. They're going to burn again. Yeah, I think this area up here is actually really going to be interesting because we moved from this high severity fire here where you've got a lot of standing dead trees there's a lot of natural regeneration, so the conifers are coming back in. And as we move a little further upslope, we move into an area where it's more of a low severity or moderate severity fire where you've got quite a few standing live trees intermixed with a few of those um, snags. So it's a nice mosaic right through here. And you know, these are these are live trees, but the base of the tree looks very, very black. And if you if you look up the tree a bit, you can see how high the fire came up. It's called the scorch height. And you can see the, the height of the black on the tree. And even though you know the fire went up these trees probably 10 feet, the trees are fine. These dug fir trees have, have very thick bark that protects the live tissue inside from the heat of the fire. So they're able to survive uh, quite a bit of heat. We're looking up here at you know an area that that really just the understory burned. So the fire came through and cleared out all that underbrush, all the the young growth, the young trees, and the the woody shrubs, the herbaceous vegetation, and left the tree canopy. By mosaic, I mean patches of different fire severity. So there's places where there was a very hot fire and burned with high intensity. And you've got other patches that there are live standing large trees where fire just kind of burned underneath. So, you know, I think about it like a quilt where there's different pieces. I love recreating in burnt landscapes. I'll preferentially go run in an area that's been burned or, you know, go camping in an area that's been burned because they're, they're spectacular. You can see forever in a burnt landscape. You know, you see wildlife that you'll never see in a closed canopy forest. There's more light available on the forest floor. So the, some of the seeds will germinate and then through time, you know, grow up and become the, the next forest. You know, another thing that's gonna be really important with this fire is that it's right above this river. And so all these, um, these trees that are gonna come down, all this woody material will end up eventually in the river. It really helps contribute to the salmon habitat. 
I like to think about forests in the same way that we think about a campfire. When you build a campfire, if you only put large logs on there, it's not gonna burn, right? When you build a campfire, you put paper in there, you put kindling in there, you put some, maybe some grasses in there, and that's the stuff that's really gonna get your fire up and going. The forest works the same way. In the forest, the, the stuff that carries the fire are the grasses, the, the woody shrubs, the ferns, the, um, the small trees. That's what's gonna drive your fire behavior. It's not those big, large trees. So selectively removing the, the big trees isn't gonna do anything to change fire behavior. This was not a disaster. You know, this is a reset event for, for that forest. We'll get to go out there and, and see the different ages and stages of, of what a forest can look like. There will be some patches that are completely untouched that look exactly like they did last year.